Loving Father in heaven, we ask you to be with us today as we come into your presence to worship you. We ask that the Holy Spirit would connect us to your throne and that you would receive us in the sincerity in which we come. We thank you for your generosity, Lord, and we thank you for your personality and your interest in us as a personal God. We ask that you would do all this for us because we love you. And in Jesus' name. Good morning, everyone. God's blessings upon you. Um, I have to say that I'm glad to see Sandy here, but I'm sure that she'll be uh, leaving us shortly to uh, take care of business. Um, Sandy, you have our, our heartfelt sorrow. And uh, we, we hope that uh, things go well for your family in the last. Um, our scripture reading this morning is found, should have marked it ahead of time, it's found in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 14. I'll be referencing this verse later also in the message. Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister to those who will inherit salvation? I'd like to invite you to Open your hymnal to number 425. We're so glad that we can sing if we keep covered. 425.
morning again. Uh, it's at this time that we do our, um, our worship and giving. Um, and we aren't going to have anyone come and collect it, but when you uh, leave, there's a plate in the back that you can put your uh, offering and tithes and offerings in this morning. Now let us have prayer for that. Dear Heavenly Father, we would ask and pray that you bless our tithes and offerings this morning, help them to go to the furtherance of your truth in this area. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. Okay, um, let's see. It's now we have uh, prayer time, time for uh, prayers. Are there any prayer requests this morning? Remember Sandy and her loss. Are there any others? Yes, Bob. Okay, your sister in law in the hospital for a stroke? Okay. Oh my goodness. Okay. Yes. at this time, let us, as uh, many as possible, if they could kneel for prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that you hear and answer prayer and answer according to your will. We ask that you be with Sandy and her loss, that you be close to her and her family in her loss. Please be with Bob's sister-in-law in the hospital, who's had a stroke and a heart attack. Dear Jesus, that you would just be with her there and be with all those taking care of her. Be with uh, Imana's request for family member with health issues, dear Jesus. We would ask and pray that you intervene in that and just work out your miracles in that. We pray, be with her, be with um, um, the healthcare worker and, and uh, dealing with COVID, dear Lord, that you would uh, keep her safe and and uh, free from COVID be with us all. As far as that, please be with the pastor. We lift him up, bless him, and send him your Holy Spirit. Help us to gain a blessing. Be with us also, and be with us as a church. Uh, be with our, please be with our nation at this time, dear Lord. It's, um, it's a very um, confrontational, polarized climate that we live in in this time in Earth's history. We would just ask and pray that you be with our leaders and be with our country, we pray in your name. 
I guess we're all going to get caught in the rain when we leave the service unless uh, the Lord uh, sees fit to uh, change things for a while. Is this on? This doesn't appear to be on. Turn it on. got the green light. Let's see if we can get that straightened out. Thank you. People today seem adrift, living in a loose, uninformed places without boundaries or information. Gallup polls suggest that 60% of Americans believe in the existence of angels. But not many years ago, the entertainment industry focused on them in different programs, movies, and so forth that they came up with. You can maybe remember one that was made, I think it was the first one after World War II, I think it was. It's a Wonderful Life with George Bailey and Clarence, his angel friend. <laughs> field of Dreams that Kevin Costner made where he built a baseball field in Iowa for famous dead baseball players to come back and play. And they thought that that was angels. You know, a lot of people think angels are departed people. There was a comedy done called Angels in the Outfield uh, where there was all kinds of strange things that happened to help a particular team win. And the TV program that Michael Landon starred in, Highway to Heaven. And there was another sequel to it, I think, also, that, that was done. What can a serious Christian believe today? You're not going to get any serious information from the news media or the entertainment industry because they don't have a clue. I'm not sure that they're interested in a clue except as they can create an angle for it somehow to put a hook in people so that they'll glue their eyeballs to it and spend money. There is an unseen world that parallels the one that we walk in. It's just as real, but intersects with this one from time to time. The Bible ought to inform us reliably, and it turns out it does, and that there are these beings that are described, these supernatural beings that intervene from time to time to do God's work. And we know a lot about it. It's all over the Bible from beginning to end. The first occurrence. You tell me, where do you think the first place that an angel is mentioned in the Bible? It doesn't take very long, does it? The day that Adam and Eve fell. It says in Genesis 3.24, cherubims with flaming swords were sent to bar the access to the Garden of Eden and the Tree of Life. What, what does cherub mean? Cherubim, of course, is, you know, cherubims, if you will, depending on the version of the Bible you use. It means to bless and to pray. Interesting, isn't it? In a way that they're God's communication to us, and they 
they, they uh, take our prayers, they bring our blessings from him. We, as we look at, Gen at Exodus 25, verse 19, when, when Moses was to, instructed to build a sanctuary, there were a lot of different elements to it. Of course, the focus of all of it is the Holy of Holies, which is only seen by one person once a year. That's the high priest. But depicted, cast by people who were gifted by God to do such things. And from the gold that was taken from Egypt, they were all slaves. The only thing they had was what they collected from the Egypt. That was the first ingathering. You know, we don't do that much anymore, but they did it and a great deal came from it. There are two kneeling angels, aren't there? And they're looking down at something. Can anybody tell me what that is? The Ark of the Covenant has a lid on it. And the lid has a name. Pardon me? The mercy seat, it's made out of solid gold. That thing must have been really heavy. Of course, it wasn't real thick, probably. But even if it was an inch thick, it would be really heavy. And then these beings were cast and, and put on top of it. It wouldn't be an easy thing to open, would it? But it wasn't supposed to be opened because it had some precious things inside that we won't go into right now. But I think you're all aware. Also, there's a, a special, how can I say it, rank of angels that we see depicted in only one verse, actually two verses in, in the Bible. Isaiah chapter 6, there are depicted there seraphim, which means in Hebrew, burning one, because they're in the presence of God, they're near the presence of God. and. Uh, uh, it was part of Isaiah's vision that he saw this, and he said they had six wings instead of two. With two, they covered their face. With two, they covered their feet. And with two, they would fly. And it was this seraphim that came in with tongs, took a coal out of the fire, and touched Isaiah's lips so that he would be equipped to speak for God. And then we can see that there is a, a very special angel that's depicted in Daniel 8, verse 16. It calls him the man Gabriel, but then also we find that he is called an angel. Evidently, as he introduces himself in the New Testament, uh, as a parallel to this, he is, identifies himself as the one who beholds the face of God. Very high rank. In Luke 19, 119, we read about Zacharias' encounter with the same angel. He came to announce the uh, coming birth, the uh, conception of John who would be Jesus forerunner in beginning his ministry in the New Testament and he answered it says the angel answered Zacharias and said that he was Gabriel and it says that he was an angel so we know that he is he was sent to many he was a very powerful angel evidently angels have levels of authority like any military would have and they have rankings of authority based upon what's given them by God. What are they? We read in our scripture this morning it says are they not uh, ministering spirits sent forth to those that are heirs of salvation? They are non-material. They are beings, personalities, they can take upon man's appearance or they can be invisible. 
depending on what God's mission for them is. I would suggest that it's possible that someone here, and we don't have that many here today, may have seen one and didn't know it because they are both seen and unseen. They are heard. We looked into this at prayer meeting some weeks ago, but there was a very interesting quotation, or a, well, quotable rather, that Alan White said about how the voices of angels and the appearance, in the appearance of man, have been heard in legislative councils of the world, where it was important for the decision of a particular country to be made at God's behest. We can read about that in Daniel where when Daniel was trying to understand the vision that he was given, there was, Gabriel was sent to him to help him to understand it. And then later, Daniel was upset because the king seemed to have no, um, uh, no inclination to fulfill the prophecy that God had made that they would be captive for 70 years and then return to Jerusalem. And so he fasted and he prayed and it tells us that the devil resisted the will of God. Probably Gabriel. The devil resisted Gabriel. And so the Son of God himself had to come down and contend with the devil so that the king would relent and then open the way for the prophecy to be fulfilled. It's very interesting how all this stuff happens. All this stuff happens. So we, can, we know that they can appear to be like men. In Hebrews 13 verse 2 says, Do not forget to entertain strangers, for by so doing some have unwittingly entertained angels. You know, there's a story that, that Ellen White tells us about a, an evangelist that we had. You know, she had a hard time with some of our leaders and some of our evangelists because our method was to go into a town and, and publish in the newspapers a challenge for a debate on the Sabbath with the local pastors. And the evangelists were very skilled at being able to win those debates. They had a record of never losing one. And one night, an unknown minister came. And you could tell he had a collar on. And he sat and he listened. And he talked to the, to the evangelist at the end. And the evangelist was so insulting and so demeaning and so superior. You ought to know better. You're supposed to know the, know the Bible. Later on, Ellen White wrote this man a letter saying that the person that he insulted was an angel. Come to test him. You know, Adventists might be privileged to have a message that others haven't yet discovered, but it doesn't belong to us, okay? It belongs to God, and when we go to share it, we must represent him in his character as he is. They also have super, superhuman or greater than human intelligence and power. It's been demonstrated throughout the scriptures, as you can well tell. In 2 Peter 2, verse 11, it tells us that the angels have greater, are greater in power and might than man. Now, how many are there? Can anybody tell me? The Bible references some numbers, but it doesn't really confine it. It suggests something. Now, I've done a little bit of work on this. It's 10,000 times 10,000. That's 100 million. That's a lot, but it's not overwhelming. But then it multiplies it by thousands. 
And if you multiply 100 million by 1,000, and it says thousands, and then you multiply 100 million by another 1,000, you come up with 10 trillion. And we don't know how many more there are because the thousands are plural. Now, that's a lot. What do we have in the world today? Eight billion, nine billion people? So it's greater than 10 trillion. Now this opens up some interesting possibilities that I'll touch on in a little bit, just for you to think. What do angels do? Well, according to Isaiah 6, verse 3, one of the things that they do is worship God. God is being worshiped by them, and it's their delight to worship him. How happy are you to worship God? Are you happy to be here today and to recognize that he sees and hears you and he can read your heart? He knows the difficulties, the disappointments. He knows the insecurities that you have. And he longs to be able to help you with those things. But you have to ask, don't you? You have to ask. And all you have to do is ask. And God will give it. In Isaiah 6, verse 3, it says, And one cried to another, these are angels, and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. I wonder how much of his glory is left on the earth. Not in the hearts of people. not in the hearts of people. Another thing that they do is rejoice in God's works. There was a minister, uh, a, a uh, angel that came and ministered to Jesus after the exhaustion of his wilderness sojourn and his temptation by the devil. When Jesus was suffering in Gethsemane, before the cross, when the weight of the sins of the world was crushing his spirit, an angel came and restored him. In fact, in Zar of Ages, Ellen White suggests that if he had not, he wouldn't have made it to the cross. He strengthened them to endure what he was going through. You know, God doesn't always give us an escape route. Here's an exit. You can get out of this. Oftentimes, he strengthens us to bear what's taking place. We could wish to escape. What was it David said in the Psalms? I wish that I had wings that I could fly away into the wilderness and be alone. He's not, he's not the only one that felt that way. How about Elijah? Elijah also had a ministering angel, didn't he? After his exhaustion on Mount Carmel, and after his having led King Ahab back to the, the capital city, and then, and then find out there was a death decree on his head from Jezebel. And he ran and ran and collapsed. And the angel did not rebuke him when he woke up. The angel ministered to him, didn't he? He gave him food. He gave him drink. And he bade him to go back to sleep. And he slept again. And when he was ready to, to travel, uh, then God revealed himself to Elijah again. I love it that God doesn't condemn us when we're down. He doesn't jump all over us. He doesn't call us names. He isn't embarrassed by being our friend. I don't know why, except that his character is greater than ours. There's a lot more to, to holiness, friends, than just being careful not to commit a sin. Holiness involves a lot more than not doing. It involves being, being like our Father in heaven. Caring, helping, empathizing. And then it tells us that Jesus could have called legion, legions of angels to save him. The exact number is 72,000, according to reckoning. Angels also come to execute God's will. God's judgments. 
Where do you think the 10 plagues of Egypt came from? They came from an angel, didn't they? And when they got to the last, the 10th, we know it because what was it that passed over those with the blood? The death angel. He came there to take the breath of life. You know, even in death, God doesn't cause needless concern. He just, it's time for a person to go. He takes the breath from them. After all, it came from him. All life comes from God. And the death angel passed over, thus the name of the high holy day of the Jews. Think of Sodom and Gomorrah. Abraham bargained with God, didn't he? If there are 10 righteous in Sodom, he said, oh good, I know that Lot has that many in his family. And how many got out? Having to be led by the hand to be pulled out of the town by the angel. Three. Lot, his wife turned back. Remember that. And his two daughters that were left, the young daughters that weren't yet married. The ones that were perished in the city along with their husbands and their children. All of his grandchildren were gone. Let me tell you a little story that I heard. Stories from Ruth Graham, Billy Graham's wife. She was born and raised by missionary uh, parents in China. This is before the communist regime. And from the people that she knew, they told her about someone that they were acquainted with, who was a humble, illiterate Chinese lady. She lived in the countryside. And she heard of a missionary, she heard a missionary actually, that came and spoke about Jesus. Gave a little sermon, you know, a little talk, and talked, told about Jesus and how he loved people and he was powerful and he could breach, breach the tomb. going back home that same day a tiger jumped out of the jungle and grabbed her little girl and ran off part way with it and then dropped it and turned around and came and jumped on her her daughter would have been killed if they hadn't jumped on her but then she would be killed in seconds if something didn't happen. In her terror, she cried out, Lord Jesus, save me. And the tiger became like a little kitten, left her and her daughter alone, and walked away. Why do you think that happened? What do you think happened? You think of Daniel in the lion's den. What was his answer to the king? When he came the next morning to ask, what, Daniel, are you still there? Did your God come and intervene and save you? And what did Daniel say? My God has sent his angel and shut the lion's mouth. Angels are mostly unseen, but the effect of their work especially on those that call upon the name of the Lord. We can read about the time that Jerusalem was surrounded and the metaphorical language was they were up to the neck in the flood. 185,000 Assyrian soldiers were outside the city. And they prayed. And that death angel that went into Pharaoh's house in Egypt 
came over the army. And in the morning, they were all corpses. <coughs> what else did they do? They minister to God's people. Hebrews 1 verse 14, are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister to those who will inherit salvation? In Matthew 18 verse 10, take heed that you not despise one of these little ones, Jesus said. For I say to you that in heaven their angels always see the face of my Father who is in heaven. Each of us has an angel. And when you begin uh, understanding the number of these angels, it's quite possible that every person has one angel that only attends them. I'm sure that all of the angels would like to have a turn. Each of you have one. Now, we've seen how angels can be unseen. I thought I'd share a, a brief, very brief little story about an angel who was seen. Louise lived alone in a small cabin some distance from Anchorage, Alaska. She was recuperating from a debilitating illness. Helpful neighbors stopped to fill her wood box and start a fire. But one December morning, her wood box was empty. It was 30 degrees below zero. Please, Lord, she prayed, send someone to bring in wood and build a fire. But no one came. Her face began to ache. She would freeze to death in a relatively short period of time. And so she prayed again, this time resigning herself to God's will. Death was to be the answer. Right then, however, the door opened and in walked a young man carrying an armload of wood. He wore a black overcoat and hat. He placed wood in the box and started a fire in the stove. He filled the tea kettle with water and put it on the stove. And he went for another armload of wood. She was too awed for words. Nothing had been said. In her mind, she thought, could he possibly be an angel? The man turned as if in answer to her unasked question. He smiled. He nodded his head and he turned and left. In other words, she thought it. She didn't say it. She went to the door. There were no footprints in the snow. She looked at the wood pile. There were none missing. The snow was still piled on the whole thing. Angels can be seen, or they can be unseen. In Psalm 91, we're told that God will give his cha our angels charge over us. Different places, different places. We know that Abraham entertained three angels, actually, one of them was probably the Son of God. That was in Genesis 18, 1 through 8. Jacob had a dream of a ladder and angels ascending from heaven and descending upon it in Genesis 28, verse 12. We find the donkey speaking to Balaam, warning him that just steps away from him was an angel with a sword. 
because he was going to do something that God didn't want him to do. We think of Gideon being visited by an angel and instructing him to raise an army. How many did it end up being? 300. That was more than he needed. An angel came to Manoah's wife and said that she would conceive and have a son. That was Samuel, the great prophet. Of course, we talked about Daniel already. An angel came to Zacharias. We've seen that. An angel also came to Mary. That was Gabriel. He mentions his name. An angel came and rolled away the stone from Jesus' tomb. Son of God, arise. Your father calls you. We think of the apostles being mistreated, beaten, and imprisoned, and the angel setting them free. And the next day, when the Sanhedrin asked for them to be brought before them, they were gone. But the guards, the same guards were still there, and, the, and the, uh, the doors were locked just as they had been. So the angels can do more than just go through walls themselves. They evidently can take people through. An angel came to Cornelius and called him to faith for him to get in touch with Peter to baptize him. And we know from um, Acts 12, verse 23, that an angel smote Herod so that he died. And an angel came to Paul during a storm. You know, the job of angels is not to free us of all our unpleasantries in life. They are there to protect us from spiritual danger and sometimes from physical if it interferes with God's work. Their purpose may be to strengthen us to bear the cross that we bear. What did Jesus pray in the Garden of Gethsemane? Lord, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. That's incredible. Jesus bore all that humanity and all that empowered humanity could bear and almost could not do it. Jesus ended his prayer, though, nevertheless, as we all must. Thy will be done. Are we to develop a relationship with our angel as Catholics develop a relationship with saints? No. In Revelation 19, verse 10, John says, I fell at his feet to worship him, but he, he bade me not to. See thou do it not, he said. I am thy fellow servant who has the testimony of Jesus. Worship God. Your relationship should be with Jesus. I conclude with a story that my wife has given me. And the reason I asked her to do it was because she was a part of this as a little girl. And this is what she's written. In the early 1950s, my family lived in Loma Linda, California. There, my father attended uh, the, medical, uh, the, medical, the Adventist Medical School. It wasn't easily financially for two daughters for my parents to do this at this time. My mother worked as a school nurse to help. So during the breaks when our family would travel back to Orlando, Florida, to be with their families, mom and dad would take turns driving the three to four day trip, continuing without stopping in order to avoid motel bills. We even had our beloved pet cat with us on these long trips. I remember even as a toddler the frightening experience when one time we had an accident when mom fell asleep at the wheel. Fortunately, none of us were seriously hurt, 
and kind people along the highway took us into their homes to allow us to rest while the car was checked out. This before the days of interstate highways. Once when dad had pulled over during the night along the side of the road to rest, he noticed a car pulling over and slowly creeping up behind our car with the lights turned out. Not a good sign. Dad gunned the engine and hastily pulled away with the other car in hot pursuit. But no harm came, and once again, so because of this experience, Dad was reluctant to stop despite the previous accident. On one long uh, cross-country trip after this experience, Mom was surprised when Dad, during the daylight hours, pulled the car to the side of the road and stopped. When she inquired, he said they needed the rest, and he proceeded to pull the blankets from the car for us to lie on in the grassy area under the trees. Being exhausted, she didn't object, and soon all of us were resting soundly on the blankets out in plain view. Sometime later, Dad awoke, looked startled, and Mom inquired what was wrong, and he seemed quite shaken but only said we all needed to get back in the car and drive. Once in the car and with Dad driving again, Mom asked him again, what's going on? Finally, Dad told her what happened. He had been thinking how exhausted we all were and saw Mom and my sister and I asleep. Suddenly, there was a man sitting in the front seat of the car between he and Mom. But for some reason, this didn't alarm him because the demeanor of the man was so kind and reassuring. They talked a while and eventually the man suggested that dad could pull the car over to the side of the road where there was grass and trees and a pleasant area where they could rest. Dad did this without thinking and after the rest of the family was asleep, he and the man continued to talk before dad awoke with a start, looked around and saw that the man was gone and he then realized how miraculous the whole incident was and that it was a supernatural visitation. Mom and Dad both thought that it had been an angel sent to encourage them to rest and perhaps spare their lives in what might have been an accident. Angels are God's gift to us. They're from Jesus. They are his hands and feet to us. It is his heart who sends them. It is their joy to do what he bids. They reach out in love to us incognito. They are part of his loving care for us. Ellen White says in Education, page 304, not until the providences of God are seen in the light of eternity shall we understand what we owe to the care and interposition of his angels. I believe they are a resource to us as well as to God. They wish to develop they wish to develop in us a serious relationship with the God that they love and the one that they serve. The Holy Spirit is the primary source and must be the one that we seek. But if we can see, angels are all around us. Can you doubt, brother and sister, that that's more true here than any place. Each one of you brought one. We prayed for this service this week in prayer meeting. More angels. God would be around wherever we gather in his name. He's among us. Now Jesus himself is in the throne room of heaven. He himself cannot be here. That's why he uses the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit is here, but he brings friends with him. He doesn't go anywhere, but that he brings friends. I wonder 
some of you would like to raise your hand with me this morning to thank God for those heavenly messengers, those harbingers of his love and his watch care for you and for me. Who knows what would have happened if that angel hadn't been there talking to my father-in-law with my wife as just a little girl. I'm so glad he was there. And our children are glad that he was there. Or we would have never been together. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for those ministering spirits that you created. Who knows how long ago in the history of the universe. But you've had them for a long, long time. And what a tragedy! I know to your heart of love that so many of them turned from you and turned upon you. We'll talk about them at another time. But Lord, we thank you. We thank you for those that you have sent to be with us today. And those that you send to be with us when we're alone praying and helping those things that we ask for that are important to your will to be done. Our prayers can only open the door, but we can't, we can't fulfill the things that you ask of us. We can't get inside of another person and get them to turn their hearts to you. Only you can do that. Only your angels can do that, but we can open the door. That's why when we pray, it's not useless babbling. It's permission for you to act, and for your angels to wing their way to that one that we prayed for. May it be more and more true as time goes on until you come with all the angels in heaven to call us forth from the grave and up from the earth and take us home. In Jesus' name, amen.